All right, so let's dive into the psyche of a Rust player. When you're looking to switch it up and you want to start on a brand new server, of course, you go right to the Rust server directory to pick a new server to play on. What grabs your attention when you first start looking for a new server to play on? How enticed are you to go into one of these servers with the one out of 100 or one out of 250? Very, very low population, very, very high player slot count. Or would you rather be looking at these types of servers where the players online are pretty close to the maximum allowable players on that particular server? Now, when a new player is looking for a server to join, they typically aren't going to join a server that have very few or no players on them. Sometimes they do, but not always. And if they do decide to join that server, it's not because they want to be finding other players on there. It's because they actually want the server to themselves. But as you well know, if a player is looking for a server that they're going to spend a significant amount of time on, they want to have a decent population on that server. And in a lot of cases, a decent population is close to or almost at max population for that server. So if we apply this same logic to your server and you're trying to get it populated, what if there was a way that we could dynamically change the available slots on your server based on how many players are currently on there? Which of course is exactly what today's plugin is all about called Dynamic Population. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel I do plugin reviews, tutorials, Plus, I want to show you some of the insider tricks that a lot of the pros use to make their servers super successful so that you can do the same thing. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. All right, so Dynamic Population actually came up on a live stream that I did last week. And it's actually a plugin that I installed on my server a long time ago and honestly forgot about it. Because once it's set up, it's just done. It just works and you never really need to see what it's actually doing. We've got three or four different parameters to set up in the configuration file. This is only going to take us a couple of minutes and we're going to whip this right out. Dynamic population available from the UMod website. I'll put a link to it where I always do down in the video description down below. And being that this is probably one of the simplest plugins you're ever going to come across, there's no permissions to deal with. There's also no commands that you're ever going to use. Really, the only thing that might be different about this plugin is if you just drop it into your plugins folder. If you have plugin watchers turned on, it's going to load the plugin. It's going to create a configuration file and then it's going to automatically unload the plugin. The reason why it does that is because you haven't actually set up any of the parameters that you want the plugin to follow yet. So it loads itself so that it creates a configuration file and then it automatically unloads itself right away. Gives you time to make the changes that we're going to make here in a couple minutes. And then you set the plugin to active, reload the plugin, and then you're good to go. All right. So I thought I'd switch things up a little bit. I'm going to do this on my own local host server. I set up this server just specifically for this. There's absolutely nothing else going on on this server, but it'll give me the opportunity to show you every single step along the way, exactly how it's going to react when you install this on your server. So as you can see here, this is my list of plugins and we've got dynamic population on my desktop. I'm just going to drag and drop this into my plugins folder and let it do what I just said that it was going to do. So it says their dynamic population was successfully compiled. And then it says one of the config variables is set to false. So essentially this plugin is currently doing nothing right now. So if we go into the configuration file for dynamic population, there's only a couple of different parameters that we're going to deal with. And then we're going to reload the plugin and then we're done. We never have to touch this ever again. So this is exactly what a default configuration file is going to look like. The enable plugin right here is set to false, but we're going to change this to true. Do we want to enable queuing true or false? In my demonstration purpose, I'm going to make this false because there isn't going to be many players joining this server. So there definitely isn't going to be a queue anyway. But if you do want to force a queue onto your server, then you would leave this set to true. You never know. Maybe there's some server owners out there that want to have a queue going into their server. Do you want to set FPS limits for each individual player? Yes or no, true or false. And then we get into the actual parameters that are going to change how many player slots will show up on our server. So server min players, obviously that is the absolute lowest number that you want to have for player slots on your server. In my demonstration purposes, let's just make this 10. And what is the absolute maximum number of players that you want to have on your server 250 seems really high for a server that's never going to have any players on it so i'll put that at 100 just because why not and then if we have fps limiting turned on up here which in this case i do by default this is set to 15 so what this means is if all of the players across your entire server have less than 15 fps from their client side then the plugin will not increase the player count basically meaning you've reached your server's limits and even though it may not have met the max parameter yet the server doesn't have enough resources to withstand 
having more players or more slots opened up to allow more players to join. So if you have FPS limiting set to true, you've got your average FPS set to 15. As long as all of your players have more than 15 FPS, it will continue to increase player slots. The next section is the decrease population options. So by default, this is set to 10. Decrease pop threshold is 10. So what that means is if the available player slots on your server reaches 10, then the plugin is going to kick in and it's going to drop that max population down. And in this case, it's going to drop it down by five slots. The next section is dealing with queuing. So up here we have enable queuing set to false. If you had this set to true, this next section would apply to you. And it works the same way as the category before. Once your queue reaches 10, the plugin will automatically kick in and it will increase the available player slots by five. So if you had 10 people in queue, dynamic population would increase your available player slots by five, allowing five of those players that are in queue into your server, leaving the other five still waiting in queue. Now in my demonstration, I have enable queuing set to false. Therefore, the last section is the one that would apply to me. So this is how the plugin is going to deal with increasing player slots. So if I only have five available player slots open on my server, the plugin will kick in and automatically increase my available slots by five. Pretty simple, right? Now you'll notice the one thing that I didn't touch on yet is this overage is queue set to true. Now what overage is, is I'm sure you've all seen servers at some point in time that have, let's say a player count of 100 and yet they have 105 players in there or 107 players in there. That's what's called overage in this plugins case. So if you want to consider overage is Q, if you keep this set to true, that means those five or seven or whatever VIPs, admins, moderators, whatever it is that is increasing that count to higher than what the actual maximum player count is. Do you want those numbers to actually count towards your Q? And I would suggest that you leave this at true. Therefore, if you do have a bunch of moderators or a bunch of admins in your server, the plugin is automatically going to kick that up a little bit, not leaving a bunch of players in your queue waiting to get into your server. So now I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little bit difficult for me to actually demonstrate for you on a server that has absolutely no players on it, but I can still show you what's going to happen. So here's what I've done with my configuration file. I've changed a bunch of the numbers, yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to save this real quick and reload this plugin. All right. So I know that's probably really small on your guys' screen, whatever we unloaded and reloaded the plugin. No big deal. It's now running on those parameters that I just set, but those parameters are not good for a regular server. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, just for this video. So as you can see here, I've got my server running. There's zero of 500 players currently on this server. I'm going to join this server and you're going to see what happens in my console as soon as that happens. All right. So because OBS really doesn't like it when I start rust while I'm actually recording, I didn't actually fully load into the game, but I did log in just for a second so that it shows you this information. So it shows me there joining the server and then dynamic population immediately kicked in because those parameters were met and it decreased my max population on the server from 500 that it was by default to the 10 that we set it in the configuration file for dynamic population. So how did that work exactly? So I've got my server min player set to zero. So as soon as I joined the server, it then triggered an action. So it increased the population on my server by five. But even as I was joining the server, that then made it so that I had less than five spots available. So it increased it by another five spots, giving me the 10. And this would continue to work this way right up until I had five players on the server. As soon as that six player joined, it would mean that I no longer have five available slots. It would then automatically bump it up to 15. So you can see how this makes it a little bit more intriguing for your players that are looking at your server, trying to decide if they're going to join it. Again, going back to the very beginning of the video, you're now diving into the player's psyche a little bit to maybe understand what they're thinking as they're trying to select a new server. Unless I'm going in for something incredibly specific, I will not go into a server that only has one player in it. I also won't go into a server that has 10 players in it if the max population is 100. But I might consider going into a server with 10 players on it if the max population is 20 or maybe even 15. So this is all controllable using dynamic population, basically making it so that the max population on your server is a dynamic number that is always changing depending on how many players are on your server. So obviously you can see how this plugin would be beneficial from every single server that's just starting out right up to the ones that are incredibly successful. We can constantly be shifting our max player slots depending on what our population currently is. Now, one very good question that I know somebody throughout this video is going to want to ask, is there a way that I can make it look like there's more players on my server when there in fact isn't? The quick and easy answer to that question is no. And no, this plugin is not going to help you do that. In fact, it's an incredible violation to face punchers TOS. Don't mess around with that kind of stuff. You don't want to try and skirt the system. Don't try to cheat your way into a good, strong population. Cheaters never win. Winners never cheat. Thanks for watching today's video. Remember to like and
can subscribe. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until next Friday, if you can't be smart, at least try to be safe.